we're going to do is we're going to take a pattern out of E major. So we're going to go uh, 7, 9, and 11 for the A, D, and G string. So we got... Again, we're going to hammer on all those notes. So I'll pick the first one. Hammer, hammer, pick, hammer, hammer, pick, hammer, hammer. Okay? And then the next two strings are going to have the same pattern as each other. So we're going to have 9, 10, and 12. All right, so the whole thing all together is... Now one thing you can be aware of is as you're going down the strings and you're picking, bring your palm down to mute the strings out above the string that you're playing. So your hand would kind of be going like this. All right, little tip. So what we're going to do, once we get to the B string, we're actually going to change the pattern a little bit. So we're going to go... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hammer up just how I have been doing. So it's going to go 9, 10, 12. And then I'm going to pull off back to 10 from 12, pull off 10 to 9, and then I'm going to hammer on and pull off. All right, so all together we're going to have. Now I'm going to do a sweep. Why? Because it's totally 80s and it's totally fun. So we got. So that sweep is going to be 11 on the G, 10 on the B, 9 on the E. So we're going to have... And then I'm going to hammer on those three notes. Right? You can just you can skip this middle one if you don't want to and just So that's the choice is up to you. A lot of times I'll often just skip that middle note. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide up to another position, up to the 16th fret, and then I'm gonna do pull-offs out of that position. So we're going to go from 16, 14, to 12 on the E. And then I'm going to go to the string above it, the B string, and pull off from 15, 14, to 12. And then bend up. So we're going to have... So what you're doing there is you're basically staying in E major, but then I'm going to end this run in pentatonic. Now I wouldn't, an E minor pentatonic that is, and I wouldn't normally just do that. I would come out of it more like, you know, or some sort of... Make a complete phrase out of it. You know, do the typical thing that I normally do, like I'd pull out that pull off. So I use that same pull off exercise I did uh, over here, but now I'm on the B string, so I'm going to go 15, 14, 12. And I'm going to hammer on from 12 back to 14, back to 12. And then I'm going to go up to 15 on the G, back to 12, and do that same, same little riff. So I'm actually doing that three different times. And then uh, oftentimes, instead of uh, bending up on that 14 like a lot of people do in the pentatonic, I pinched this from Eddie Van Halen. He bends this 12 and bends that down. 
So that's just one of the ways you can fuse scales, major and a major scale with a minor pentatonic scale and mix up those notes and come up with some cool phrasing. Now what we can also do, uh, a thing I learned doing a dime bag or a Pantera song and also uh, some other Van Halen tunes is you don't necessarily have to stick within the rigid confinements of a scale. Sometimes these guys will just blow down through notes, not conforming to any scale, but they know how to land on the right note. So, for instance, I forget what Pantera song it is, but in the Van Halen song, I'm the One, he has a particular riff that he does where the pattern's the same down every string. So that pattern would be 11, 12, 14, from the A all the way down to the uh, E. Now he ends on that note, which brings him back into the key. Right, he mixes, mixes it up. But those notes wouldn't normally be associated with the scale, right? So you don't always have to stick in that you know, box. What you can do is you can break the rules a little bit. So those notes would work uh, over a lot of these because you, if you're fusing major and minor pentatonic together, well, your major pentatonic, that's your Skinner pentatonic right there. Right? And then you fuse your Stevie Ray minor pentatonic together. If you fuse those two together, they meet right here at the 11th and 12th frets. So part of that would work. So I'm basically taking on the A, D, and G strings, I'm taking notes that actually are in that scale if you fuse them together. Now where that pattern breaks is when you get to the B and the E strings. But we're gonna come back into E both major and minor with this E note. So you can do a similar pattern to what we were doing. If you want, and just, you know, fuse the pentatonic riffs back at the end. just did there is we took a major and a minor pentatonic, fused them together, went down in a scale that basically didn't conform to anything, and got back into it with this E note. I went to minor, but I mixed some of those major notes in there so it didn't go to a completely minor sound. resolve to the other E right here on the G string, but did it in a total major pentatonic scale pattern. So those are different ways that you can combine the scales together to get a really unique, cool sound. You listen to a lot of the 80s guys do it, but I was learning some Pantera and it really was cool to see how he did it as well and it fit over a metal context and also, if you know your Van Halens and stuff like that, it fits over you know a rock, medium rock to hard rock format. But then you can also really come back to a, a pure blues sound. <laughs> by fusing in the pentatonic scale. So it's really making this hybrid soup of notes but the point being that sometimes it's cool to break some rules and not just, you know, go, oh, okay, you know, I know my... Right? Even that riff right there. You're breaking out a little bit. You're learning how to use chromatic notes and introduce them into a scale. So even that shape right there, that's a chromatic, you know, going up a semitone, a, a piece right? And using it in that box of the major E major pentatonic right there. 
Um, Same down here in the, if you want to make a minor scale position, so E minor, pentatonic in this particular instance, have some major flavor to it, you can add the chromatic notes in there too. <laughs> That's cool too because you can get those three note per string runs in there and kind of introduce some speed. See, I have a hard time. I can't do the Eric Johnson thing really well where you know you just burn over two note per string pentatonics. Zach Wild, some of these guys are just Frank Marino are just amazing at picking two note per string runs. I particularly have a harder time with it. So I'll fuse three note per string runs in there to get my speed. <laughs> licks in there. Now if you want to just stick to a two note per string thing, what we can do is we can take the, one of those three note per string patterns and we can take it out of the E major again. And we can start adding notes and then bringing it back into the pentatonic. Minor kind of sounds so we can... So what I did right there is it's just another exercise where you're going 12, 14, 16 and coming in there on the 15th fret of the B and then the, and then the next time I'm going to go 12, 14, 17 coming back to the 15 on the B. So again, that's the first part, part of it. The second part sounds like this. I'm just doing hammer on the pulse. So work with that. Try some three note per string shred runs, a little sweep, you know, that sweep totally works. Up in there as well. We'll do some future lessons, some more stuff on sweeping. But you can throw it in there without sounding totally 80s and totally dramatic and just, you know, awesome Ingbe, which I cannot do any justice to because he's the man. But uh, <laughs> you can throw in quick little things that outline either a chord you're going by or whatever and not sound too 80s or or whatever and just kind of use it as an exercise. So give it a shot. All right, catch you next time.